Yeah, I'm the Executive Director, uh, Kenya Institute for Public Policy uh, Research and Analysis, uh, which is a government uh, think tank uh, under, the, um, under the National Treasury and Economic Planning. And uh, we undertake uh, uh, various activities in uh, um, uh, promoting and strengthening the public policy making process. So for today, uh, we are going to demonstrate uh, uh, one of the mandate that we have, and that is uh, undertaking uh, uh, research uh, that is aimed at uh, providing uh, 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 policy, policy advice to the government. So I'll start with, uh, uh, yeah, this is, this is how I'm going to uh, take you through. I'll introduce just to see for us the savings uh, levels for the, the, the country. I'll also uh, highlight uh, some of the interventions that are ongoing and that have been there. Uh, also discuss some of the channels and the motivations uh, for savings, uh, the relationship between savings and uh, uh, shocks, and then look at uh, uh, the empirical analysis uh, that we've done on savings behavior and of course conclude with uh, um, um, uh, policy implications. So just to start with, um, when we think about the levels of, uh, of, of savings and investment, you'll notice that um, before the um, 1990s, when we were going through uh, structure adjustment programs, we had not even liberalized the, the market uh, in terms of the financial sector, in terms of uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the foreign exchange, um, and the, also the, the capital markets. Uh, you see like uh, the two of them were almost moving uh, closely. But then after that, in a liberalized uh, world, what you notice is that uh, the gap between uh, savings and investment uh, has, uh, has persisted. Uh, it has remained uh, uh, also uh, uh, yeah, there for, 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 for quite a while. And this in itself has implications as far as uh, uh, financing development uh, uh, is concerned. So, uh, and this is what has actually motivated uh, the kind of study that we are trying to do to ask ourselves uh, how then do you um, uh, grow uh, domestic savings uh, such that uh, you are able to uh, mobilize adequately uh, to finance uh, investments. Of course, over the time, uh, the government has actually uh, taken up uh, various initiatives uh, to promote uh, the savings culture in the country. Um, and we have seen, for example, uh, if you look at the long-term development agenda, uh, there are expectations uh, set up by the government in terms of uh, uh, growth uh, in, uh, in, in savings. And uh, uh, yes, uh, we want to be at a point where our savings are growing by 29%. Uh, uh, but we are not yet there. We are actually, as, uh, as the chair has said, we are still below 10% 10, 10 uh, at the moment. So um, <clears throat> the, the efforts that have been done is, for example, to establish uh, uh, channels uh, for, to facilitate savings, uh, whether long-term savings like the National Social Security Fund, uh, which is there for uh, uh, long-term savings, the commercial banks, uh, the capital market uh, uh, reforms have gone through um, uh, over time, and I'm happy that we have the chair as part of the capital markets. Uh, and of course, there are other platforms, uh, including um, right now, there is quite a lot of emphasis on uh, uh, those in the informal sector uh, forming cooperatives uh, so that they can, they can uh, one, on one hand, aggregate uh, uh, their services or their products, but on the other hand, also to mobilize uh, uh, resources and also to use that platform uh, to have uh, different uh, access to uh, uh, access to financial facilities, including microfinance, uh, mi micro uh, mi micro um, uh, insurance kind of products. Uh, the liberalization of the market has seen the interest rate policy change. 
Uh, but we know that uh, uh, there has been a, a quite a, a back and forth at some point uh, in early 2000s when we had the dollar bill um, in terms of uh, interest rate uh, uh, capping it. Uh, of course, it didn't, uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't happen, but recently in the 2016-17 uh, uh, up to about 2019-20, 20, we've seen a period where the interest rate uh, capping uh, has happened, and this uh, 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 almost reversing the gains that we had done, uh, and it has implication. It had implications on uh, how uh, the the pricing for for the financial assets are concerned. And then, of course, we uh, so that that taking care of the uh, kind of private sector uh, savings. Uh, but of course, uh, when you think about the, the government savings, there has been this commitment for financial sustainability, um, uh, um, having a, a, a fiscal consolidation path. Uh, but of course, when, uh, uh, when we get into some of the shocks, like uh, uh, the 2020 shock, then we find that uh, fiscal uh, uh, pressures uh, uh, making it impossible. Uh, without fiscal buffers actually to sustain the momentum as far as fiscal consolidation is concerned. And then finally, uh, I can also talk about the very recent uh, uh, attempt by the government to uh, come up with uh, what we are calling the Financial Inclusion Fund. And with this fund, uh, what the government is looking at is not only to have uh, those at the bottom of the pyramid uh, accessing uh, 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 loans, but at the same time also uh, saving and creating that culture uh, of saving. So if you look at uh, uh, the saving structure over time uh, through the channels, you'll notice that uh, uh, data from uh, uh, fin access from 2006 to uh, 2019, we have not included the 2021, you'll notice that there has been a, a change in terms of shifts in terms of uh, the channels that are being used for uh, uh, saving. Uh, for example, you find uh, with the fintech, uh, of course, that is now taking up uh, 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 quite, a, quite, quite a higher uh, proportion. But we have not forgotten uh, the traditions of our banking sector. Uh, and of course, circles are also uh, coming in heavily. And uh, also the groups or the, ch the uh, what, do you, what do you call them? They, they, they are like informal, informal groupings, uh, chamas, and uh, you know, uh, they are also uh, still taking a priority in terms of uh, the channels through which uh, uh, savings uh, uh, happen. Um, in terms of motivation for saving, you will notice that uh, uh, we always assume that uh, you know you are saving because you want to invest. But from this, uh, uh, you'll notice that uh, it's not always that uh, savings are happening because you want to invest. Uh, they, are, they are happening because you have a target, either to educate your children, so you want to keep uh, savings today because you have a target, so there are targeted savings that are happening. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you are also saving for other ordinary needs of the, of the household. Uh, but in terms of saving for investment, uh, yes, it is there. Uh, but we can see that uh, there is quite a lot of uh, uh, smoothening co consumption over time at the household level. Um, if you look at uh, uh, shocks that have uh, hit the country over time, uh, they have implications, for example, on uh, inflation, which has, uh, uh, of course, implications on the on the real on, on the real savings or also the real interest rates uh, for that would attract savings. And uh, any time we have had uh, these shocks, you'll notice that uh, we go into a period where uh, the saving level actually comes down. We are hit again, uh, and then the saving level actually uh, tend to, to slow down, which means that uh, we need to see how we can smoothen uh, um, the, the, the savings behavior across the various shocks that, uh, uh, th that the country goes through. And this has, uh, uh, you can see that it, uh, it is very clearly related also uh, in terms of the, uh, the returns that you get from the savings. Over time, uh, you can also see uh, a change as far as the population structure is concerned. Uh, between 1989 uh, census and what we have uh, in 2019 census, you'll notice that uh, the age group of uh, 0 to 17 and 18 to 34 
18 to 34 is growing up, of course, uh, 0 to 17, it means that they have already matured, they have gotten into the labor market, and uh, therefore this is causing an increase as far as the 18 to 34, the youth uh, are concerned. And therefore the life cycle aspect, uh, we may not necessarily uh, say that it's not, it's not uh, something to take into consideration. We need to get, take into consideration, and you can see the figures here, uh, that uh, something is happening as the, as the uh, uh, demographic dynamics are changing. Our fiscal uh, deficit, I've already talked about it. Uh, I don't need to go back to it. But I have to say that uh, um, how we went about in the analysis, uh, we used the life cycle uh, hypothesis uh, to do this work, and I don't want to go into that theory. But I want to tell you what is it that uh, we were able to get out of uh, that analysis. And one of the things we found is that uh, uh, as I've indicated, the fiscal aspect uh, is very crucial, and that any time we, we find that uh, the fiscal, def fiscal deficit uh, is, is increasing, uh, of course, uh, public savings, uh, therefore, are, go uh, are not uh, necessarily there, then you reduce, you tend to reduce the, uh, the, the, the savings. Even for the private sector, the savings uh, are, are going down uh, because of those pressures. Shocks. Uh, that would come from the uh, terms of trade. Uh, here, using the terms of trade, sorry, I have jumped. How do I go back? Yeah, I've gone back, yeah. Uh, in terms of terms of trade here, again, there it is. is it, why is it jumping? So, sorry. Yeah, again, you find that there is a negative relationship both in the short term and in the long term. Inflation also, uh, uh, which has implications as far as the real savings are, are concerned, and which uh, is a, uh, an implication as far as macroeconomic stability is concerned. Uh, the income levels, we use the per capita income. You see that uh, as per capita income rises, uh, then there is a tendency to increase the uh, private uh, savings. And in terms of deposit rate, uh, um, uh, the expectation is that uh, as deposit rate, uh, uh, in, um, sorry, we, we found a negative relationship actually. Uh, the expectation was that we should see a positive uh, relationship, and this was happening both in the in the long run and also uh, in in the short run, uh, which means that uh, uh, we need to think about uh, the aspect of um, uh, the substitution effect as well as the income effect and how the net effect uh, is, is, is uh, uh, coming into the total amount of savings uh, that we are generating. And of course, we have seen, uh, as far as the age dependency is concerned, uh, you notice that uh, uh, as we think about uh, the population uh, structure, we need actually to, uh, in the long run, uh, to see a situation where uh, we are able to enhance uh, uh, the uh, the savings at at the at at the youthful uh, stage, so the same the same thing we got with the national uh, the national uh, savings, but only in some no, not in all variables do we see a significant uh, relationship. But what I wanted to bring here is the aspect of financial development. Uh, the financial development tended to give us a, a negative uh, uh, relationship, especially uh, in the short run. And we need to think about uh, whether the financial development that is happening at the moment is providing an environment where uh, we have adequate uh, instruments, adequate channels uh, where uh, savings can be uh, enhanced. And um, so to come to uh, uh, policy implications, uh, what we are saying is that uh, uh, fiscal sustainability is, uh, is always so, yeah, I've run into problems. I don't know what has happened. Yes, um, thank God I have uh, my, yes. I don't know what has happened. Your device ran into problems. Okay, as it runs into problems, I don't want to run into problems myself. So one of the things is uh, fiscal sustainability. 
uh, we are saying that uh, we need to actually. Okay, actually, it ran into problems. Let me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fiscal sustainability. We need to we need to guard uh, uh, to guard it uh, because uh, anytime we have fiscal deficit and maybe uh, you have like now increases as far as the tax rates are concerned, uh, or even other levies that uh, that would actually bring down the amount of uh, uh, income that uh, uh, households have for, for for saving. This may have implications as far as the savings rate uh, is concerned. Uh, the second thing is about uh, price uh, uh, stability. I know there are situations where we have uh, 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 drought situations and we find ourselves in uh, uh, circumstances where prices have gone up, especially prices for food, and it means that uh, uh, when you are trying to reallocate your resources between uh, uh, food and, uh, and saving, that aspect uh, uh, can have uh, implications on saving. So and in ensuring that price stability is maintained in the country uh, has, has uh, uh, automatically uh, an effect on uh, uh, the household and the, the, the allocation of resources that they have. Of course, uh, quality and inclusive economic growth matters a lot. And what you find, uh, for example, in Kenya with the current government, uh, they have had a focus, they are having a focus on uh, what you're calling the bottom-up economic uh, uh, agenda, uh, focusing on uh, uh, agriculture, where majority are employed, uh, enhancing uh, uh, agricultural productivity uh, becomes a, uh, a major issue. And secondly, is also on micro and small enterprises. Uh, this is where the youth are, and also this is where uh, uh, decent jobs need to be generated uh, so that uh, you can see about uh, 14 million of Kenyans uh, who form about 85% of, uh, uh, of the labor force each year if they are given uh, an opportunity uh, uh, with the decent jobs then they can actually uh, uh, come in to uh, enhance the, uh, the, the savings uh, uh, in the country. And of course um, there is one element that we have always forgotten, uh, and, and that is the, the quantification of the non-cash savings. Uh, in a country like Kenya where you have a significant, uh, even subsistence uh, uh, farming, you will find that uh, a lot of them uh, don't actually do cash saving. What they do is uh, they will buy today a goat, they will buy tomorrow a chicken, and those becomes actually part of their saving. And any time uh, they run into issues, these are the things that they cash in, which means that it's a saving in itself, uh, but uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, get captured uh, in, the, uh, in the process of, uh, uh, um, yes, getting information on the amount of, uh, amount of savings that are there. And of course, finally, uh, is a, uh, as I've indicated, the quality of jobs uh, to absorb the uh, youth category, because if the youth are actually introduced to the culture of saving, then that would help a lot in terms of uh, promoting uh, um, uh, private savings. And I've said for you two minutes, I uh, thank you very much.